to be clear, Ted did not ask us to write a talk. <laughs> and Ted probably doesn't care. <laughs> but we're gonna do it for you anyway. As soon as I can, there we go. So if you would be so kind as to indulge us for the next nine to 10 minutes, we'd like to present for you the correlation of humor and context in modern American satire. And as such, Storm and I would like to talk to you a little bit about the creative process. As comedians, it's something we're actually asked about a lot. <laughs> and as satirists, it's tied in with the concept of inappropriateness. Before we start talking uh, specifics, uh, we'd like to start things off by showing you uh, what is easily the saddest, most unfunny thing on the entire internet, if not the entire world. That is the proper song. Oh, close your ears, that's right. I see half of you reaching for a remote that isn't there. For the six of you who never have watched a television set in the last ten years, this is of course the ASPCA commercial with Sarah fucking McLaughlin. Encouraging us all to saw our way through our wrists in honor of poor abused all. This little fella right here! Oh. Alright, I can't take any more. A few months back, yes, there's still a course of thank yous from the crowd. <laughs> Only a shower of hundred dollar bills will stop the show. <laughs> um, that never ever works. Not yet. Uh, a few months back, Storm tweeted about that very commercial explaining, well not explaining, but sort of reminding everyone how incredibly sad that thing is. It's just the worst. Uh, and that started a discussion between the two of us about ways to possibly, I don't know, improve it a little bit. <laughs> Which, in rapid succession, uh, ended up in the Twitter hashtag, songs to make ASPCA commercials less impressive. <laughs> As you can imagine, the internet was very helpful. <laughs> A few samplings. I'm feeling better already. I don't know I Here's another sample. question, what is crossing the line? <laughs> but that invites a more basic question, what is the line? Well, let's discuss it. <laughs> As you can see, all humor exists on two axes. Humor and tastelessness. <laughs> If your joke's level of humor is great enough to overcome its level of tastelessness, you get a laugh. <laughs> However, if it is not, you get... It's too practicing. <laughs> so our job as comedians is to constantly find, monitor, yet not cross the line. <laughs> There she is right there. Now the tricky part is that tastelessness is not a fixed point. It exists upon a continuum. As you can see, running from left to right from safe to risky, topics inherently safer are uh, less controversial. As such, there's less risk involved. Uh, for example, let's go with the hackneyed, uh, you know, go-to shitty comedian topic, airline food. <laughs> Nobody's going to disagree with you. As I say, there is no risk involved, and as such, there's just not much humor or tastelessness that you can mine from this topic. 
Airline food is also inanimate. When you get into people, it starts to become a little riskier. However, if you are making a joke about, say, lawyers, most people aren't going to argue with you. Still not horribly tasteless. And depending on who it is specifically that you're talking about, uh, you can move yourself further up the tastelessness continuum. <laughs> Inherently hilarious to a certain population. <laughs> Inherently completely not hilarious to a certain other population. Now, then you get outside of the realm of individuals, and it can still be very tricky, and you have to be very careful, really know what you're doing, especially if you're making a joke about groups of people. <laughs> and the continuum just goes onward and upward from there. <laughs> so, now that we've gone over the theory, let's put it into practice with a few concrete examples. Start off relatively easy. Your basic contrast joke, sad dog rock and music. Extra layer of comedy because the song is titled Black Dog. If you didn't know that, not quite as funny, so it puts it, oh, where does it go? Well, we uh, polled a representative population and we tabulated those results, all of which fall in that gray area there. We analyzed the, the data and then we just sort of arbitrarily decided where we thought that the song lies. <laughs> <laughs> not very humorous, not very tasteless, pretty low. Let's take one more step up. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? All right. Same basic joke. Happy song, sad dogs. It does introduce the concept of letting the dogs out when the dogs are clearly still in. <laughs> a little less safe, but not much. So it's maybe a little higher up on the scale. This the next example uh, is a good illustration of where we were talking about the, uh, uh, the not fixed point that is tastelessness. Simple contrast joke, high energy, sad dog. Uh, also introduces the concept that 80s music is inherently funny. <laughs> so normally the song would maybe fall somewhere around here. However, this is where you have to know your audience. Songs can fall prey to guilt by association or what we like to call the Futurama factor. As any of you who've ever seen the Jurassic Park episode of that show know, that song carries a whole extra layer of context. So among a universe of neat geeks and nerds, it falls somewhere else. <laughs> Let's continue going up the scale. Posted without comment. laws in this state. <laughs> can't believe this is our job. <laughs> We're making money right now. <laughs> so the question becomes, how far can you go? How far along the line before you simply cannot possibly overcome its tastelessness? Is there an upper limit? Is there a final point beyond which you just no matter how much humor there is, you just cannot overcome it. We found it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the farthest viable data point.
20 seconds. <laughs> Hopefully at this point you have learned a very important lesson. That of course being comedy is not easy. It is in fact incredibly dangerous and difficult. It should only ever be attempted by trained professionals. It requires aerobic exercise. <laughs> But just as a public service, we don't want to show you this, but we will. Just so you know where the other side of the line really is. And we are proud to demonstrate. No, we're not proud. We're a little ashamed. <laughs> it is our moral obligation to demonstrate. It is our duty to show you an example of what we call shitting all over the line.